Do you know the difference between S3 versus EBS versus EFS? If not, then this video is for you. Please subscribe and hit the bell to be informed of free cloud computing training every Wednesday. Hi, I'm Mike Gibbs and I've been in tech for over 25 years and my mission is to make cloud computing technology simple and available for engineers, architects, and technology executives. We find that many aspiring cloud architects have difficulty differentiating between S3 versus EBS versus ESS. So by the end of this video, you will clearly understand and know the differences. We will begin our discussion with EBS. So what is EBS or elastic block storage? So EBS is high performance, non-volatile, meaning it doesn't go away, storage for compute instances in AWS. Now this is very different than instant storage. Instant storage is the type of storage that comes with your virtual machine that gets deleted upon instance termination. So realistically speaking, if you have any data that you want to store, obviously it needs to be on something other than instant storage. And EBS is a very good option. EBS volumes are mounted and they're used directly by the host, just like a virtual hard drive. And EBS volumes are relatively high performance and there's options which we'll talk about later, but these are virtual disks. So they're sitting on high performance RAID arrays. So they can give you some really good performance along with some high availability and high redundancy. So what is block storage? So because EBS is block storage, block storage is a type of storage that places data in blocks and then stores those blocks in separate pieces. Now each block has an identifier and basically you're given the key effectively, like a map of how to put all the pieces and parts back together. And it's really high performance because blocks can be placed wherever it's most efficient and it's very flexible storage can be used with multiple types of operating systems such as Windows and Linux. But the point being is because it can store the data in little blocks and place the box wherever it's most efficient and then you can reconstitute it on demand, it's very high performance. So because it's high performance, when do you want to use this type of storage? And quite frankly, the main reason you're using it is because you want storage that doesn't go away upon instant termination. But instant storage is not going to give you the performance you need to run high performance applications. And we'll talk about some of those applications in a minute, but let's look at EBS options. So you can buy provision input output per second. And what this is really giving you is a, is a high performance, low latency drive. And when we talk about input and output measures per second, we're talking about how many reads and writes you can do at a time, which was related to latency, which is different than throughput, which is you know how many megabits or gigabits you can move per second. So if you're dealing with a high performance application that's sensitive to latency, you're really gonna be using a provisioned IOPS volume. Now the next type of option that you could use is general purpose SSD volumes. Now these volumes have great throughput but they have obviously higher latency than something if you're purchasing the provision input output per second. But these are really good options. They're great for a host, to, you know, to boot up the host. They're also really great in like a lab a test environment where you need a high performance storage higher than you can get with a magnetic RAID array. But at the same time, you don't need to pay for the very expensive provision IOPS per second. So this is typically where you'd use the general purpose SSD drives. Now you can also purchase throughput optimized EBS volumes. And what these things are really good for, they're very good in terms of throughput, meaning it's they're in terms of the amount of megabit per second, but because they're magnetic drives, they have much higher latency. So this is good if you have to store large files very quickly, but you don't need high, you don't need the low latency storage. And then your last option is a cold hard drive, which uh, realistically speaking, this is designed for low frequency read and writes and you're probably not gonna use it for anything other than storage of large amounts of data that you don't need access to quite that often. So, now you know the types of EBS volumes and you know why you would use them. Next up, S3. So what is S3? So S3 is known as Amazon Simple Storage, and it's some very interesting storage that has a wide range of use cases on the AWS platform. First thing we need to talk about is S3 is object storage. And object storage breaks files into pieces called objects. 
Now each object has a unique ID and based upon their IDs, they're very easy to put back together. But given that S3 is object storage, it cannot house an operating system. So the operating system for an instance is going to have to be placed on instance storage or an EBS volume of some kind. But S3 is a great place to store your data and many use cases, which we'll talk about in a moment. The first thing you need to know is S3 is high availability, but really high durability storage in that it's available 99.99% of the time, but it has 11 nines availability, which means 99 point nine 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 all the way to nine more places. So what that shows you is, you know, you're probably going to be able to access your data when you need it with four nines availability and it's definitely going to be there or nearly definitely. Um, even if it's down, it'll still be there later. So I mentioned that S3 has a lot of uses on the AWS platform. So let's talk about some of those use cases very briefly. It's a great place to back up your organization's data. And whether it be just standard data that you're going to move there, or it be one of your databases where you create a snapshot and you store it on uh, S3, it's a great place to house virtual images of your virtual machines. It's a great place to store any kind of data, really. It's also great for static website hosting. For dynamic hosting, you're going to need something that's a little different. And it's great for distribution of content, software, media, and because you can store so much on it at a relatively good price, it's great for disaster recovery planning. But it also integrates uh, with Redshift and a few other things for some big data analytics. And that's, you'll see as you can see, S3 is used in a lot of use cases with Amazon. And uh, it's a great place to host internet applications. So S3 has a lot of uses. But the key to remember, it's a place to store things, but you can't store an operating system on them because it's object storage. Next up, EFS. So what is EFS? EFS is a high performance network file system. And that's the key. It's a network file system. So that's when you're going to use this when you have 10, 20, 100, 1000 computers that need to access the same data on a network. So high performance network computing and EFS volumes are high throughput, low latency because they have high IOPS and it can be very high capacity and it's elastic and then it'll adjust size on demand. So you really don't have to worry about running out of network storage, which is wonderful. Now this is designed to be used again by many computing instances at the same time. So you're only going to use this when you need to store a lot of data on a network at a high performance, low latency base where multiple users are going to use it. And it's POSIX compatible. And what that really means in today's world is that it can still interoperate with some legacy systems. So in summary, let's talk about the three types of storage. Again, we have EBS, which is high performance storage for compute systems. So high performance storage for the host. We have EFS, which is high performance network storage. So again, this is high performance network storage when multiple hosts need to access the same data. And we have S3, which is object storage, which is used for backups, contest distribution, static website hosting, and a whole lot more applications on the AWS platform. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more free videos on cloud computing. Please remember to download the free AWS practice exam for the Certified Solution Architect Professional Exam. Thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you next Wednesday where we'll have a new video on cloud computing. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you soon.